Shalom Israel, Brother Reggie Jr. here. So today, guys, I'm going to be doing Genesis chapter 39, just picking up where I left off from last time. And if you guys remember in uh, Genesis 38, we kind of focused a little bit on our forefather, Judah. Well, in this chapter, we're going to be focusing on, we're going to be taking the focus back to our forefather, Joseph, because we got to see what becomes of him and this slavery that he was sold into. And uh, pretty much from this chapter, through to the end uh it's going to just be dealing with our forefather uh, joseph so from here on out we're just going to be dealing with joseph pretty much just focusing in on his life and the journey and the hell that he went through so that being said guys let's go ahead and uh, get into this genesis chapter 39 and i'm gonna read verses one through six first and it says and joseph was brought down to egypt who brought Joseph down to Egypt? Those Ishmaelites that he was sold to. But the Bible going to tell you that. It says in Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. So uh, we see that an Egyptian, a high ranking official named Potiphar, who was the captain of the guard, he bought joseph off of the hands of those ishmaelites and so uh potiphar was the captain of the guard so we know that in the palace where pharaoh uh dwelt you know he had those guards well potiphar was actually the chief he was the ruler over those guards so let's just say there was something that uh pharaoh wanted the guards to do because remember pharaoh was king of egypt whenever he wanted the guards to do something he didn't go to all of the guards and say, hey, I want you to do this. Uh, -uh. There's a reason why there's order. He went, he'll go straight to Potiphar, say, Potiphar, I want the men to do this, 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 and this. And then it's, then it's uh, Potiphar's job to go and bring order to those guards to make sure they do what Pharaoh wants done. Okay, verse two. And it says, and the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, meaning Potiphar, the Egyptian. And the only way the Lord is going to be with you and the only way you're going to prosper is if you keep God's commandments. And so that lets you know that Joseph was a God-fearing man and he kept the Lord's commandments. But let's keep reading verse 3. And his master, meaning Potiphar, saw that the Lord was with him, with Joseph. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hands. So Potiphar discerned that the Lord was with Joseph. And he definitely knew it when he seen that everything that Joseph did, he prospered. So it was pretty much uh, the same thing that Laban seen in Jacob. Man, everything he do, he is prospering. So Potiphar is going to end up doing like Laban. Okay, he's going to let uh potiphar is going to let joseph handle everything in his household because hey after all everything he doing is prospering so in him prospering i'm going to prosper okay uh let me see verse three and it says yeah and it says and his master saw that the lord was with him and that the lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand now did Joseph prosper just because he was special? Oh, and I kind of explained it already, but uh, let's go ahead and just let the uh, Bible speak, man. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, because the Lord made a promise. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1, and then I'm going to read verse 8. Verse 1 says, and it shall come to pass if. And that if, whenever you read the word if, that lets you know that whatever it is that's about to be said is conditional, okay? So if thou hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, you know what it says, hearken diligently, meaning you're always listening for the voice of God, always looking to listen and be obedient, okay? To observe, to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, this is just the Lord telling 
you know, the Israelites this as a nation. But don't think, remember, this was just given to Israel as a nation, but you better believe. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, our ancestors, Noah, all of them. You better believe God told them, told them this right, right here. If you be obedient to me, I will bless you. Okay. Verse eight. It says the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. You know, if you be obedient, you keep his commandments. He says he'll command a blessing upon your storehouses. And in all that thou settest thine hand unto do like Joseph, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God have given thee. And it's not only just in Jerusalem or the land of Israel that the Lord will bless you in, but if you keep his commandments and you're obedient to the Most High, he will see to it that even in captivity, he will set a table for you before your enemies. To where even the natives of this land, they will be suffering, but you, a slave, a captive, will prosper in their eyes. That's how much, that's, that, that is how much the Lord will bless you. If you do what he say, that even the natives of the land are going to be suffering, they're going to be hungry, can't make ends meet, but you, you will be well taken care of, even though you're a captive in this land. And that's what I love about the Lord. You do what he say, he will take care of you. Sometimes I can't believe Israel traded this in for some idol gods, man. That That is crazy. And that's something that still get me to this day. But uh, let's go ahead and go back to um, Genesis 39. And I'm going to read verse 4. And it says, And Joseph found grace in his sight. So Joseph found grace in Pharaoh's sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put into in his hands. So in other words, Potiphar basically made Joseph Eliezer of Damascus. You know how Eliezer of Damascus was to Abraham? Well, that's basically what uh, Potiphar made Joseph. Joseph was Potiphar's Eliezer of Damascus, okay? So now, um, I want to deal with some. It says, uh, Joseph found grace in his sight. Now, do you think Joseph himself could find grace in the eyes of Potiphar? No. You know why? Because you're a slave. Slaves don't get grace. That's not how that works. No. Joseph got that grace because the Lord gave it to him. Because let me tell you something. Your enemies, which... The Egyptians were an enemy. You don't get no favor like that because you're just special some way or you speak eloquently or the way you dress or you always felt different. Uh, -uh. The Lord is the one that bestowed that favor on you because you're a captive. Captives don't get favor. So let's go real quick. Let me just read it to you. Let's go ahead and real quick and go to uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, and I'm going to read verses uh, 1 through 5 because we're going to read a little something about favor. It says, my son, forget not my law. So this is uh, the Lord speaking through Solomon. He says, my son, forget not my law, which the Israelites have forgotten God's law. It says, but let thine heart, meaning thy mind, keep my commandments. Okay. And a way not to uh, forget is to do what? Meditate on the Lord's words, uh, the Lord's word day and night. Because whatever you meditate on, that's what's going to come up in your mind. And see, that's why you Hebrews, when temptations and tests come up, um, you fall to those temptations because you haven't meditated on the Lord's word. So now when those temptations come up, you have nothing to combat them temptations with. But that's besides the point. That's not where I wanted to go. Let's keep reading. Verse 2 says, "Keep you're going to keep the commandments for what? For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. So if you want a long life and you want peace, you're going to have to keep God's commandments. Because it's a whole lot of Hebrews out there, man. They ain't got no peace. And hey, you may live a long life, but that don't mean you're going to have a long life of peace if you don't keep them commandments. 
You got to keep them commandments. You want peace, you must keep them commandments. All right, verse 3. It says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee, because guess what? That's also a part of the commandments, mercy and truth. It says, bind them about thy neck, just like a, uh, a chain. Why? Because when you put a chain on, guess what? When you get up, you go somewhere, guess what? That chain comes with you. Well, that's why the Lord is kind of likening uh, that to like a chain, you know? keeping it around your neck like a chain says write them upon the table of thine heart okay verse four now watch this this is what i want to uh this is where i wanted to get to it says so shalt thou find what favor favor right then joseph find favor and grace in the sight of uh potiphar he says so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of god and who and man okay and i have experiences keeping the lord's commandments uh no matter where i go especially at work you could have a demon manager you know your manager is nothing but the darn devil okay but your manager treat everybody else like crap you know they don't be always micromanaging your team and different stuff like that but when it come to you they're very kind to you they make sure you're well taken care of that ain't nothing but the favor of god that's all that is okay verse five it says trust in the lord with all thine heart meaning with all your mind and lean not unto thy own understanding meaning don't think you can get these things that we just read, read about. Don't think you can get these things some other way without keeping the commandments of God because that's what Israel is looking for, some kind of shortcut. Well, maybe there's something I can do to be blessed without actually having to serve God. The Lord said, don't ever think that foolishness because it will never happen. Peace, long life, health to your navel all of those things come when you're obedient to the words of the most high there is no other way there is no other way okay but that's just what i wanted to get to when it came to uh the favor because it says uh uh joseph found grace in his sight all that mean is a uh, favor but we know joseph is a captive captives don't get favor so we know that was something the lord uh, gave to him because that's something he promises to all of us who serve him and is obedient to him but uh let's go ahead uh to let me go to joshua uh one and one because i actually meant to read that uh, read this joshua one and one okay and it says uh, let me see. Yeah, I wasn't going to read this, but I want to just go ahead and read Joshua 1 and 1. I'm going to kind of wing it here. It says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of, uh, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, see, it don't matter how great Moses was, he still what? He still died, okay? Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel, okay? Verse 7, I'm skipping down. It says, only be thou, this is the Lord talking to Joshua, he says, only be thou strong and very courageous and you can't be strong and courageous if you're effeminate so the lord telling joshua to be a man okay says be strong and very courageous that thou observe to do according to all the law which my moses servant com uh my uh which moses my servant commanded i hate when i trip over my words like that but uh notice how he says uh, be strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe 
to you know do the law and stuff because it does brothers and sisters in a world full of evil it takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength to keep God's commandments because you're going to have people to try to shame you you know people are going to make you the outcast everything people are going to laugh at you make fun of you some people are going to get uh, angry with you because you decide to keep God's commandments. So, yes, it takes courage. It takes strength when you're the only one in your family that keeps God's commandments. While the rest of them has kicked you out as an outcast, they all doing their thing and you're the only one sitting there. That takes some real courage and some real uh, strength and the Lord know that. So for all of you out there, man, that's feeling bad and down, hey, be courageous and be strong. Because, yes, it is hard, but that's why you got to be strong. You can't let the, the wicked win, man. And it says, turn not from it to the right hand or to the to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. So Joshua didn't just, you know, prosper because, oh, I'm next in line to take Moses' seat. So by osmosis, I'm going to be blessed. Uh-uh. Even when it came to the great Joshua, it was still conditional. It don't matter what position, whether you're the king of Israel, whether you're a, a prince, it don't matter. Princess, governor, it don't matter. It's all it's conditional from the lowest of Israel to the highest of Israel. If you keep God's commandments, you will prosper. If you don't, God got some curses waiting on you. All right, verse eight. Now look at this, it says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Now this is what I was telling y'all uh, when we was reading a little bit of that Proverbs. It says, but thou shalt meditate therein day and what? Night. So this word, this is what you're gonna be looking at day and night. You're not gonna be spending all your time on Facebook. You're not gonna be spending all your time on Instagram. You're not gonna be Snapchatting nobody. You're not gonna be doing any of that on Twitter all day, seeing who posted what. Uh uh. You're gonna spend most of your time in this because a lot of people got a lot of excuses. And I'm talking about Israel, got a lot of excuses to why they can't read the word. Why you just don't understand, man? They ain't got time. No, you don't have time when it comes to God. But when it's time for something you want, you make sure you make the time. Listen, God ain't even, he ain't even asking for much. He just asks for effort. What's wrong with every day or every night setting your timer for 15 minutes? I'm, I was going to say 30, but I'm not even going to say 30, but just for 15 minutes, 15 minutes and just say, hey, for these 15 minutes, I'm going to set the timer and I'm just going to read one chapter or two chapters every day and before i actually go in to read my chapter i'm going to go to exodus and i'm going to look over those commandments what's what's wrong with doing that but we always lie and claim we don't have any time but that's only when it comes to god y'all we got to do a little bit better than that man but when you meditate day and night guess what them laws and them commandments it stay in your mind so when you're tempted to sin or anything like that, different temptations come up, you have a weapon, which is this word of God, to fend off that temptation. Get out of here. But if you've been watching Desperate Housewives and Empire and I don't know what the rest of these little shows is because, you know, I don't really watch TV. I control what I watch. But, you know, this ratchet music. That's what you're going to have to fend off this temptation. And you're not going to prosper and you're going to fall right into that temptation because you ain't got nothing but garbage in your mind. But anyway, let's go ahead and, and uh, keep reading. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then, because remember it said uh, Joseph was a prosperous what? Man. But that only happens when you keep God's commandments. It says, and then thou shalt have good success. And if you notice as, and we're going back to Genesis 39, so you can flip back. 
But if you notice, that's why the children of Israel, this is why we don't have good success. Because we refuse to keep God's law. We say all kind of weird stuff. We can't keep the big ten. Keeping God's law is too hard. I've heard the pastor even say God's law is a curse. I mean, it, it's crazy. I even heard one pastor, I was looking at, um, you know, a debate. Um, I think it was IUIC. Uh, they was going against some uh, Christian pastor. And the Christian pastor literally said, you can't keep them commandments and something like that. And then he said, uh, Jesus even broke the commandments. I, I mean, I was stunned. I said, these are the type of leaders that are leading Israel. I said, no wonder Israel is in a mess. That Sunday pastor literally said, shoot, Jesus even, he even broke the law. I, I'm thinking to myself, what? I'm like, pastor, if he broke the law, he he would be unfit to be our, our Passover land. I said, man, whatever, man. I, I said, we, we are in a mess. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and go back to Genesis 39, man. And I'm going to just uh, continue reading Genesis 39. And I'm going to read uh, verse 5. And it says, And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house, just like uh, Laban's house was blessed for what? Joseph's sake. Just how Laban's house was blessed for Jacob's sake. And it says, And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. So do you think the Lord really wanted to bless uh, Potiphar? Heck no. Just like the Lord didn't want to bless Laban. But the only reason he did it, the only reason was because his servant's sake. So make no mistake, when you are on the job, when you're in public or at the house, and let's say that place is wicked as hell, the only, let me wipe this off. What is this? I had something on my screen. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Y'all had something on my screen. I had to wipe it off. So I'm sure the screen flipped or did something weird. But my point is, is that even when you're a wicked place, sometimes the only grace or favor that that place has is the fact that you're there. Make no mistake. You could be on the job. You could be working on, with a wicked team or you could be working in a wicked department. And the only reason your department, your team prospers is because you are on that team. You are in that department. That can even work for a city or a state. Lord, say, I'm going to bless this city. I'm going to bless this state just because my servants are there. That is the only reason. If it wasn't for them, this place would be destroyed. So, man, thank God for the righteous, right? Mm. So, let's go ahead and go back, y'all. On I'm going to continue reading verse 6. And it says, and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. So Potiphar left all that he had. Just like Eliezer Damascus, that's what Joseph was. He left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not all he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. So Joseph, man, he was a good looking man so not only was he a prosperous man he was a gq man he was a very very good looking man all right verse seven and it says now in verse six it says that potiphar knew not all what he had meaning potiphar it's not that he trusted joseph but it was more so of the fact that he knew that the lord was with him and that everything he did was prosperous. So he was just like, hey, Joseph, hey, whatever you got to do, whatever affairs of mine you got to take care of, do what you got to do, man. As long as I'm prospering, I'm good. So it was to the point Potiphar didn't even know what, how much stuff he accumulated. He didn't know what was going on. All he knew was, hey, Joseph over my stuff and my stuff is prospering. Notice. 
It's still Potiphar stuff. It ain't Joseph stuff. It's Potiphar stuff. See? So, let me just keep reading because I was going to get off into something, but I don't want to get off of uh, subject. So now I'm going to read verse 7 through 10. That Well, let me just go ahead and say it. I was going to say in verse 6, see how Potiphar kind of left everything to Joseph. Joseph pretty much was like the right hand of Potiphar. Well, basically that was practice for something that was going to come for Joseph later, but we'll get to that in later chapters. Anyway, verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife, uh-oh, cast her eyes upon Joseph. And that's where the evil be starting at because you know your eyes is hooked. Your eyes is hooked directly to that darn brain. Okay. So she cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. So she wanted Joseph to go in unto her. Okay. And of course, Joseph can't do that because, hey, she's someone's wife, man. So guess what? This is a temptation. Now, you Israelite men, I'm just letting y'all know, most of y'all, y'all would have went in unto this woman, okay? Let me read verse 8. It says, but he refused and said unto his master's wife, and we don't know her name, because the Bible doesn't tell her, but it says, behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath into my hand. There is none greater in this house. Then I, meaning I'm the right hand man of Potiphar, neither have he kept back anything from me but thee. And why? He's going to tell you because thou art his wife. So, of course, you're the only thing that I cannot mess with or have. How then can I do this? What great wickedness and sin against Potiphar? No, sin against God. See, notice how he said sin against God. He didn't say sin against Potiphar. He said sin against God. And he called lying with Potiphar's wife great wickedness. Now, I want to let you know that this is a temptation. Because remember, whenever you're dealing with uh, a kingdom and you're dealing with chief men, such as like Potiphar and other commanders you know, in the high, you know, those high ranking commanders and officials, those men had some bad women. So you better believe Potiphar's wife was a 12 out of 10, not a 10, a 12 out of 10, because they only dated the most beautiful women. So you better believe it. But, but Joseph said, Hey man, I, I can't do it. Because it's great wickedness and it's a sin. Guess what that let me know? Joseph understood that that's breaking God's commandments. And um, let's go. Let's go ahead to go. Uh, let's go ahead and go here real quick. Proverbs six. Proverbs chapter six. We're gonna take a look at adultery real quick. Because by Joseph. Sleeping with this woman, that would be considered adultery. That's why uh, Joseph said it would be wickedness. And it will be a sin against the Most High God. So, Proverbs 6, 32 through 35. And it says, But whoso, this is the Lord talking now. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. And he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. Why? Because God going to whoop your ass. And then when that man catch you, he going to whoop your ass. Verse 33. A wound. You going to get a wound from who? God and from that man. And dishonor shall he get. Why dishonor? Because the word is going to go forth. Hey, this man like to go around and sleep with men's wife. And, and hey. That was a great dishonor because men didn't want you nowhere around. And why? Because you're going to try to get my wife. Okay. And it says, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. You are going to be forever shamed for that madness that you did. Verse 34. Now, this is what happened when you commit the actual act. It says, for jealousy is the rage of a man. So that jealousy, that envy. 
And most of that jealousy for men because it's more so of you're taking something that belongs to me. See, envy is just you got something that I want. But jealousy is something that I have and you're threatening to take away from me. That's when that jealousy kick in. So when he walk in the house and he see you laying with his wife. Okay, you taking something that belongs to him. So now that man is going to be full of what? Rage. And guess what God said? Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. So in the day when he come after your dome, that man, you know, open up that door and you in there with his wife. Or that don't happen, but he found out you have been with his wife. Guess what? In our day and time, that man coming with a shotgun. He come in with a pistol. That's what he, a Glock 32, that's what he coming with. He coming to get you. Why? Because you done slept with this man. Why? That's why the Lord said, hey, you just hurting yourself. And let me tell you something. Both Israelites and heathens, I see them on the job all the time. These men and these women, they married, but when they get on the job, they got these little work wives and these little work husbands and they doing all kind of stuff behind the scenes. And I'm just telling you, it always end up coming out. The husband, the wife, they always find out. It always end up being some mess. Always. That infidelity, y'all, is it's serious. That is not a game at all. Marriage is sacred. That's why the punishment from for breaking that Sacredy. I don't even know if that's the word, but the punishment for breaking that sacredy is uh, it's a huge cost. It's a huge recompense because marriage is that sacred, you know. Verse 35, it says that man or that woman would not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou give as many gifts, meaning ain't no bull. They ain't taking no bull. They don't want to hear what you got to say. Please, man, I, I give you two million dollars. I give you five million. Uh, you can have my car, man. Here. They hand that stuff, they want blood. They eyes gonna be blood shot red because they, they want blood. They gonna be after your behind. That's why the Lord say don't do that foolishness. That's why when whenever people get caught in the mess go down, they wanna cry and call the police, be on the witness protection, all that, because they scared to death because they know they got something coming. So guess what? Just don't do it. A married man, a married woman, you need to leave them alone. I don't care how good they look. That is someone's husband. That is someone's wife. You cannot mess with that because God going to get you or that man or that woman, they're going to get you. God said, all you're going to do is get a wound and reproach. That's all you're going to get. All right. But let's go ahead and go back real quick to uh, Genesis 39. It says in verse 10, and it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And you see how temptation now, I know this is just about, uh, you know, Joseph and Potiphar's wife and all that. You know, the whole thing and all that. But it is for me, it's more so of she represents to me. She's the embodiment of evil temptation. And you see how that evil temptation just bugs you, just messes with you day by day. And it just continuously, it continuously provokes you. That's why I was saying that you got to have this word in your mind. So when that temptation is coming, you got something to fend that temptation off with. You're not going to be uh, bothered like Joseph. You're not going to be bothered by her good look. Because you better believe that Egyptian woman, I presume, was a 12 out of 10. Because remember, the high ranking officers, kings and all that. Listen, they only got the best looking women. So he wasn't worried about her looks. He wasn't worried about her body. None of that foolishness. Why? Because this was in his mind. Because he knew it was a sin. I cannot do this thing. 11. It says, and it came to pass 
about this time. Let me see. Okay, anyway. It says, and it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. So he's going to do his usual. And there was no, there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. Now, when it says she caught him by the garment, it wasn't like she just caught him. Oh, I got your garment. No, this was like a, mm, like she was going to force him. Yes, women can force men. She was going to force him to lie with her. And it says, what? And he left his garment out of his hand, meaning, boy, he slipped right out and fled and got him out. So he probably ran up, run, ended up running out the house naked. <laughs> or he probably had some undergarments because, you know, they had undergarments. But his main garments, he slipped right on up out of them things. Verse 13, I'm going to tell y'all something in a minute, 13, and it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled for, but Joseph got out of that. Sometimes your temptation too, you got to just run from that thing. Get on up out of there. Because boy, he sure got up out of there, boy. It didn't stop Joseph. Boy, he was 10 toes out of there, 14. So when she seen he was fled forth and she had his garment that she called unto the men of her house. So she finna get ready to lie and spake unto them saying, see, he have brought in in Hebrew unto us to mock us. And he came in me. He came in unto me to lie with me. And I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out, got him out. And, you know, basically, uh, she accused Joseph of rape. He tried to, you know, rape me. And, uh, he forced himself on me. And when he seen that I screamed, he got startled and ran and stuff like that. And, and I could go into how, you know, it happened to Israelite men today. The women be lying and stuff like that on Israelite men saying they raped them and stuff. We pretty much know the story. But here's another side to things that I wanted to mention, just like this right here. And I like this example here. Men, you have to be careful with some women. And, you know, some women too, but it happens to men a lot. Especially when you're good looking, you're a prosperous man, like much like Joseph. There are some women who really want you real bad, okay? And... They first come on to you, you know, they're trying to get you to attract to them and stuff like that. And, you know, you know, basically they want you and you reject them. Let me just put it that way. Sometimes these women are evil as hell. Some of them will set you up and accuse you of stuff because you rejected them and didn't want them. You know, you could be on the job, right? It's a woman that wants you, but you don't want, hey, man, I, I don't want you, you no know, different stuff like that. And they'll say, okay, you know, some days go by, they'll say, hey, do you want to uh, walk with me on break? It's just you and her, okay? You go with her like a darn idiot on break by yourself. It's just you and her, then you come back, you go your way, she go her way. Then next thing you know, you know, your manager come up to you. I want to talk to you. This girl say you did this to her and stuff. Then the police show up. Yeah, well, you're under arrest. She said you groped her and did this, this, and that. There are some women that will set you up because you reject them in that, and because you don't want them. And I'm just telling you, you cannot be around every woman alone. Especially in this day and time, men use wisdom. If you can bring another man, bring another witness when you're with a woman because you can get lied on the day. And ladies, I just have to keep it real. This is just the climate we're in today. But you can't be hanging with women, especially in this day and time, by yourself. Okay? You need to be around a populated area so that everybody can see. That way it's a bunch of witnesses and can't nobody lie on you. 
and different stuff like that. And I just had to put that out there because a lot of men today being set up by these women. Man look good. He reject the woman. She come up with a plan to destroy this man's life. I've seen it happen all too many times, man. It's the saddest thing ever. Verse 16 through 20. And it says, and she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. So she uh, held on to his garment until Potiphar, her husband, came home. And it says, and she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass as I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled out. You know she was exaggerating the hell out of this story. I know she was, 19. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, what she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, and his wrath was kindled. So Potiphar, he heard what his wife told him, he was pissed, 20. And naturally so. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison and put him into into the prison, a place where the king's prisoner, prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. So they probably had multiple prisons and stuff like that. But Joseph was basically took to the king's prison. All right. And more than likely, uh, Potiphar was probably over the warden that was over this prison, okay? But no matter what Joseph probably said and all that trying to defend himself, he finna get put in prison. You know why? Who is going to believe the slave? And you Hebrew brothers, y'all have to understand, whether it's your own Israelite women or these heathen women, you have to be careful. So they definitely ready to get your black behind. You got to use wisdom, man. And you have to understand that, you know, well, let me just put it this way, at least for Joseph and Potiphar, that whole situation. Guys, naturally, you can't fault Potiphar. Who you think Potiphar should believe? Think about it. Who should he believe? A slave named Joseph, a slave. Or his own wife that he loves. Who are you going to believe naturally? Who should he believe? She'll believe his wife. Going to believe no damn slave. Why would I believe a slave? That's why when these uh, Israelite women and these heathen women accuse a Hebrew male of rape and, uh, you know, domestic violence and all of that stuff. Who you think these heathen men, men finna believe? They slave, you know, they arch enemy, or are they going to believe their daughters or the Selah women among Israel? They're going to believe their daughters. They're going to believe their Selah, the, the Selah women. That's who they're going to believe. That's the way this thing works. So, you know, as Israelite men, you know, we have to be very careful. You know, you got to teach your sons that, hey, this is the way it is. And so when you're out and about and you're around these women, hey, man, you got to use some uh, caution, especially if you're, uh, you know, uh, you know, you're a good looking man and you're uh, you got a lot going for yourself. You have to be careful because a lot of women target men like that. If they can't have the men, they don't want none. No woman to have them. And they usually put together some kind of plan or they plot to destroy this man's life. That's why you have to be uh, very wary. But, you know, the whole point of this right here is it's like, you know, who's going to believe a slave? So no matter what Joseph say, no matter how much he did for Potiphar, how much wealth he got of Potiphar, like Jacob did for Laban. At the end of the day, ain't nobody finna believe no slave. You a slave, nigga. You a slave. No one believes a slave. You're an animal. You hear me? A four-legged beast. You're an animal. You're a commodity. No one believes you. That's why me, I don't even try to waste my time. When the heathen try me, get to accusing me, 
I don't even try to defend myself. I mean, I'll say the basic stuff. Hey, were you here? No. Did you do this? No. I don't go up. No, I didn't do it. You got to understand. I don't even do all that. I don't even waste my damn time. Know why? Because I'm a nigga and I'm a slave. I answer the basic damn questions. Were you here yesterday? No. Okay. Somebody said they seen you do this. Did you do this? No, I didn't. I give you the bare bone basics. You know why? Because they don't believe you anyway. Why? Because it's up to the most high to deliver you. And that is why, brothers and sisters, mainly you brothers, that's why you have to serve the most high. Because when mess like that come up, the most high will make sure that he delivers you. Because you're going to have enemies come with some mess. And that's why you have to be, you have to have that shield of protection around you. You got to have that whole armor because we at war out here, man. We don't real. this is, you know, our enemies at war with us, man. So we have to be well prepared, you know. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, our teachers don't tell us things like that. And, and it's it's a damn shame, man. It it really is, man. It's a shame. But anyway, guys, this man, let's go ahead and just uh, keep reading. I'm going to go ahead and finish this out, guys. Verses 21 through 23. So back in Genesis 39, and it says, But the Lord was with Joseph. So even though all that happened, the Lord was still with Joseph. And why was he still with him? Because he didn't do that evil by sleeping with Potiphar's wife. And it says what? And shewed him mercy. The Lord showed him mercy and gave him favor. Uh oh, there go that favor again. Favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. You a slave that's been thrown into prison. Okay? That's like you being thrown into a U.S. prison. Okay? Over something you didn't do. And the Lord give you favor with the keeper of the prison. In this case, the warden. This is unheard of, brothers and sisters. That is a miracle. We think what Jesus was doing. Oh, turning water. Oh, that's a miracle. And that is a miracle. This right here is a miracle too. What slave, especially a slave, you already ain't equal with the Egyptians. The Egyptians are above you. Yes, they were above Joseph. He was a slave. But you a slave. And you get favor with the warden of the prison. That is nothing short of a miracle. That's how you know that was of God. Verse 30, 22. It says, now, now watch this miracle even further. Look at this miracle we're witnessing. 22. And the keeper of the prison, so the warden, committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it prosper. So the warden basically gave Joseph charge over the prison. Come on, man. Where they doing this at? That is a miracle, man. That ain't nothing short of the favor of God. That ain't nothing but the favor of God. We know, Come on, man. That is not natural at all. In, not in any form or shape or way. Is that natural that a slave gets favor with the warden? Then the warden puts him in charge over the prison and over the prisoners. Come on, man. That is crazy. But you better believe that Joseph knew that the Most High was with him. Even though all that stuff happened, you know, the, you know Joseph still trusted in the Most High because don't nothing move the most high like faith do boy especially when it comes to the children of israel because god say that uh you know th these are a people in whom there is no faith so if you're an israelite and you show faith boy you make god want to get up off the throne boy so let's go ahead and go to psalms 23 and i'm gonna go ahead and uh 
read verses one through six, okay? And this will be the uh, last scriptures that I, I read and then we'll go ahead and close this video out. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. This is when you're doing what he say and he's your protector. It says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. In other words, he give me peace. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. For, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though all this evil around me, though I have all these wicked folks trying to take me out, it say what? I will fear no evil. You know Joseph. He ain't fear, he ain't fear this. He knew he probably was wondering you know, man, what's going on? First, I get sold off by my brothers. They hated me, you know, stuff like that. Now, I got sold into slavery. Now, I'm in prison. But I guarantee you one thing. Joseph, he trusted in the Most High. He had faith in him. And guess what? He didn't fear because he knew. I know this is all going to work out somehow, some way. But that only you only think like that when you trust in the Most High. It says, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they shall come for me. Why? Because, you know, the Lord is the shepherd and we're the sheep. So with thy rod and thy staff, you guide me. You take care of me. You make sure I'm okay. Verse five. Now here it go right here. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That's what's happening with Joseph. Lord preparing the table. Because this stuff, man, come on, man. This is unnatural. But it says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Enemies getting they behind toe up. But somehow you, a Negro, you're prospering. And it's not even your land. You're a captive. But somehow you prosper and the natives of the land ain't even prospering. And it says, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup, runneth over. And so when you serve the most high, he'll take care of you. No matter what happened, no matter what circumstances you fall in, the most high will see to it that you come out on the other side unscathed, which is what we're witnessing here with Joseph. Because I mean, technically, man, Joseph should have been finished, man. But he wasn't. Why? Because this was all a part of God's plan for something greater than in Joseph's life, which he's going to find out, you know, a little bit later with all of this stuff he's been going through. He's going to find out why he's going to realize, oh, the Lord had me going through all this for this reason right here. And see, a lot of people want to be you, but they didn't see your Joseph moment or your Joseph story because a lot of us believe you me, man. A lot of us, you're just seeing us now prospering the Lord with us and stuff like that. But a lot of us, you didn't see us before, man, going through pure hell, man, to be where we are today. So some people want to be you, but they have no idea the things you went through. The refinery to become the gold that you are today. And I'm just going to leave that at that, guys. But I hope you guys got some understanding. And I will meet you in Genesis chapter 40. And with that, Shalom.